All right. Well, I'll call this meeting to order today, Nacogdoches Historic Landmark Preservation Committee. First um, order of business is approval of the minutes. Um, did everybody have a chance to read the minutes from the last meeting? I so move they be approved. All right. We have a motion. We have a second. You have to say it verbally right. for the I recording. <laughs> All right. Any questions, comments? Good. All right. All in favor of the motion? Approval in the minutes? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? All right. That moves us to uh, our next item on the agenda, an HRG grant reimbursement. Staff. I'm going to touch this even though our IT department gets on to me when I touch the mics, um, but I'm short, so, you know. Um, so our item on our agenda is consider historic restoration grant reimbursement for the property at 704 Virginia Avenue. Um, for those of you that weren't on HLPC um, a couple months ago, this grant has been extended one time, one or once or twice. Um, they were, a, were approved to replace the roof and flashing, replace rotten siding, and repaint the exterior of the building. Um, they got the repaint and um, exterior siding replacement done pretty quickly, had to rescope their roof because they had to switch contractors, um, and so that put them a little behind schedule. Um, so originally, the estimated cost was uh, $43,585. Um, the applicants supplied staff with copies of um, all their receipts, proof of payment, um, in the amount of $43,006, and this grant was funded um, at 16%, not to exceed $6,973.60. Um, staff recommends the approval and the release of grant funds in the amount of $6,880.96. Um, you can see here um, our expense worksheet. Um, so everything accounts, and we have our percentages at the bottom. Um, this is a before picture, and you'll have to excuse my after picture. Um, in the packet, it's very hard to get any pictures of Virginia Avenue houses just because of the grade. Um, so the applicant sent a few additional ones that you've not seen. Um, here is a before picture as well as an after picture, um, did a great job painting. Um, and up closer, because we did walk the property, you can see where all the rotten siding has been replaced. Um, there's also some examples in the back um, where they did some additional cleaning um, and replaced rotten siding. Um, and then the roof before and after. <coughs> it's gonna be on the tour of homes this year. It is, that's we awesome. Should, we signed them up, when, Monday? Monday, yeah. We got them all pretty and ready for Christmas. <laughs> All right, does anybody have questions of staff on this? Is there a motion on this? Um, I move that we release the funds. Can you state the amount, please? What's that? Do I state the amount? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the amount that just just to just $6,880.96. $6, that amount. <laughs> Any discussion? I'll discuss and say I'm always glad when a project gets done mm -hmm. and done well, and That's this house good. needed it. it did. Yes. All right. Uh, any other? All right. In that case, we have a motion on on the on the offing here. To, uh, anybody in favor of it? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? All right. Next, a COA. Yes. Um, agenda item 3B is consider a COA for the property at 318 East Main. Um, this is COA 2023-019. Um, the applicant is John Sloan. Um, some of you that were on HLPC for a while know that this property has come up before. Um, this is not the exact same application. It is the application with some modifications. Um, the applicant is, um, trying to think of a good way to say it, um, is requesting to blend two of the drawings that I put in your packet together. Um, so essentially the proposed work is pretty extensive, um, covers including a new single door entrance, um, a double door entrance, plate glass windows, um, as well as adding a second story balcony, removal of existing casement windows on that second story, um, an installation of windows and a door on the second floor to allow access out to the balcony. Um, originally in 2019, the applicant asked to use the same front facade drawing um, that is on Cowboy Jacks, the facade they restored, um, and put it on this 318 East Main. Um, since that time, um, Texas Historic Commission has done um, a preservation study on it and done some recommendations. The applicant then went a step further um, and took the Cowboy Jacks front facade plus THT's recommendations and worked with an independent um, interior designer to kind of blend some styles together and come up with another 
um, request. Um, staff finds that uh, criteria B, C, D, E, F, G, and K all relate to this application just because it's pretty, pretty extensive. Um, originally, this building was built between 1900 and 1910, um, and because of the state it was in at the time the historic preservation study was done, um, it was listed as non-contributing, um, just because at that time it had um, extensive restoration and changes done to it, many of which uh, Mr. Sloan has corrected, which is wonderful, um, but at the time it was listed as non-contributing. Um, here, there's a few pictures. Um, these were all submitted to Texas Historic Commission as well um, when they were doing their preservation study on the building. Um, you can see that there was wood siding on the front that then was removed to um, expose those windows. Um, that is not necessarily the most up-to-date picture, but that is once um, that wood siding was removed. Um, these are also some of the historic photos. This one's a little hard to see. There's a red arrow pointing to the building, but at that angle, it's a little hard to see. Um, that's a little bit closer. Um, these we estimate are in the 60s or 70s. We don't have exact dates, but based on the cars, it's probably somewhere um, in that time frame. Um, and this is what the applicant is proposing, and he is here today to speak to y'all as well and to kind of explain um, more of this, but this is what it was submitted with his application. Um, essentially doing essentially the top half of the Cowboy Jacks um, design where it's the balcony on the top with a door in the middle, windows on each side, um, and then the bottom half of the B drawing um, which is one he worked with an independent um, designer to do, which has a single door entry that would lead to the upstairs, um, a large uh, plate glass window at the front, and then a double door entry that's offset from the front. Um, so that is essentially blending the top of A and the bottom of B, if we're going to be pretty reductive about it. Um, and also I listed under here what elements of each design would be included or which elements would be removed from the current building. Um, so with that, um, I'm happy to answer any questions you have of staff. And like I mentioned, Mr. Sloan is here, um, who has a, a few additional pictures and wanted to um, address the committee about some of his thoughts on the design of the building. Um, so I'm happy to answer any staff questions you may have. Um, may have questions for staff. We can always call her back. You can always go. Get her back then. Yes. Okay. All I will right. turn it over to Mr. Sloan. So please. in that case, we'll ask the applicant to come forward. Okay. And you know the procedure, but state John your name Sloan. and who you are for the, for the recording. John Sloan, live uh, 1323 North Adonia, five, six, five, <laughs> nine, five, whatever it is, six, one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to, to correct a few things on this deal, I have some, uh, some more current pictures at the front. The, uh, the Jeff sent me... <laughs> Brian Bray is the one that had the drawings made of the, for my approval, basically. He, he had the, sent me two drawings, two renderings that he had Miss Swearingen do for my approval. Basically, the first floor has already been, it's, it's kind of a done deal. Basically, what we're trying to, I'm asking for now is a balcony. That's, uh, uh, the things that, in, that were in contention is the balcony and the the windows on the second floor. The first floor basically has been demolished. Let me let me give you all a current a little more current picture here. This is was a as of Monday this week. That's all the same picture. Oh. We're just if you don't mind. Rendering that, that uh, oh, yeah. I thought it went that way. Sorry, I thought it went that way. These these two renderings, I'll have a copy of one of them. These two renderings are one that Brian Ray had, had drawn up and sent to me for my approval, which Depending on which one I wanted like the best, and I chose the one with the doors off to the side instead of off the the, the two doors on. on the so side. what we have is B. It's B. It's B. I'm just 
clarifying. Yes. That's yes. what we have as B? That's B, Okay, yes. just because I can't yes. see there. B, uh, basically, the I had a demolition permit, and the stuff on the first floor is, is removed. Those side windows on the side are gone. Because of safety issues, I took those casement windows out of the top because the glass was falling out in the street causing a safety problem. Uh, as of one of the reasons I took them out is I'm going to try to restore those as a, to more or less to meet y'all's demands from the previous meeting. I'm going to try to restore those windows, put them back in, and what I request is let me put those windows back in except in the middle and in the middle have a, a door opening out onto this patio or this balcony that I hope y'all will allow me to have. And so basically that's the the balcony and the, the window replacement is, is what's in contention. Uh, I, I know that y'all have a, a hard and fast rule on not having a balcony that wasn't there before. Uh, that's there. There have been balconies granted that were not there. That there were no no proof that there was there was a balcony there in the very beginning. So I I guess what I'm saying is that the hard and fast rule has some soft spots in it. There there have been some granted to other people that that were not there originally. Mm -hmm. I know that that's. I've heard that over and over and over. You can't have it if it wasn't the one there in the beginning, but there has been some issue. Mm -hmm. uh, also, this building, as she mentioned, is non-contributing. So I don't understand exactly why there's such a protest about having a balcony on a non-contributing building. The reason the building is non-contributing is because of the renovations that were done in 1946. And... I, that's part of my plan is to well, I remove that basically that all that renovation from 1946 has been removed so uh, that's you know I, that's basically my my presentation is that I've, I think that I'd like to have a balcony on there the originally when that building was built they the, the guy that built it built it to suit his needs I think now 120 years later that, uh, you know, the highest and best use for that building is to have apartments upstairs and retail downstairs. There never has been a second floor. As we, as I explained in the past, I'm trying to bring the mezzanine floor to the street and have apartments upstairs. I think in this day and time, that's the highest and best use. The balcony will contribute to the apartment and also, I think, to the look of the building. I, I feel like that the balcony is I know it wasn't one there to begin with, and I, I swear that there wasn't one there to begin with, because there never was a second floor. <coughs> but, uh, but basically, that's that's what I'm proposing is to put a balcony on. Uh, I don't have any kind of design. I haven't looked at what kind of uh, any kind of a balcony. I just want to, like I say, put the windows back in that were there. Put a door in the middle for access to the balcony, and. With the, with your y'all's permission, I'd like to do that. And uh, I, I don't know if y'all have any questions. I'm more than glad to answer them. Yeah. Well, we'll open it up and ask questions of the applicant. <laughs> um, would the balcony be access to one apartment or two apartments? Just or? the front apartment. Just I'll have a front. I'll have a, two apartments. It's going there'll be large apartments. One of them be 1,800 square feet, but to just have. Uh, access to the one apartment. There won't be one in the back. The back has windows all the way across, but mm -hmm. it, there's not room to put a balcony back there. And how many bedrooms would you anticipate? Probably do two bedroom, two bath. I could actually do three bedrooms and two baths, but I, <laughs> I haven't really got that far in the design right. on it. So you're anticipating possibly two bedrooms? I have some other other apartments down. I, I have nine other apartments downtown, and those uh, uh, Two bedroom, two baths seems to be the most desirable. That's, that's really what people are looking for. I'll, I'll ask a follow up question. You're um, you're proposing the balcony for pleasure and look, not for fire escape. Is that correct? Uh, 
a little boat. Well, because then I'm wondering where we'd have a, f yeah. a staircase, if that's the case. Yeah, there won't be a staircase from that balcony. No. Okay, so this isn't a fire escape. No, this isn't no, it's a safety not a fire issue. Escape. Okay. No. <laughs> other, other, I have other questions, but I ask. What? I'll let other people ask other so, questions. Yeah, I was going to ask, like, just how big would the balcony be? Have you envision someone having little patio chairs out there and sitting out there and waving at people and things like that? And, and watch it. Christmas parades and uh -huh. whatever. I have a, a, a y'all y'all probably y'all have pictures of the uh, what is now Cowboy Jacks or uh -huh. was Cowboy Jacks, uh -huh. and that's that is a selling point of that apartment is a balcony. That's the best feature of the uh, that apartment is a balcony. And it it kind of provi it provides a, it'll provide more of an awning just for some shade for yes. people on the sidewalk under there. Yes, it it acts as both. It acts as kind of as an awning and is also as a as a patio. Uh, yeah, they've, I've, I've had tenants put support swings out there or, or just uh, picnic tables or whatever, sit out there and drink coffee. So the balcony itself will have an awning above it? Yes. Joanne? Okay, so you're coming to us, just to clarify that I understood what you're saying correctly. Okay. You're, you're asking for a balcony, but not what we're seeing submitted as the drawing, the style of A, correct? That is correct. That was my original, when I originally, the first time made the mm -hmm. application and was to have it like that, but since there was some concern about taking those windows out and, put, and that changed the looks of it, what I'd like to do now is use those same windows that were there mm -hmm. with a door in the middle that more or less matches the windows. So that it's, it have the, same, the windows would have the same look. It just have a balcony on it as opposed to. So you would open. you would, because there's five, five window openings. So you're saying you would leave. I'm assuming you said the middle, uh, two the two to the left and the right, and transform the center third one into a door. That that is my plan. The, those windows are in terrible terrible shape. That's the reason I had to take them out. Their glass was falling out of them. They're rotten at the bottom. Had termites in them. They're in terrible mm -hmm. shape. I'm going to try to salvage as many of the original windows as I can. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope to be able to put them all original windows back in, mm -hmm. but that's that's what I'd like to do. Okay. Yeah. So you're anticipating that it look like Cowboy Jacks? Um, <laughs> well, my original plan was for it to kind of look like Cowboy Jacks. Reason being, I redid Cowboy Jacks. I've got uh, I've got pictures of what it was before and after of Cowboy Jacks. That's uh, that's my before and after pictures of Cowboy Jags. Uh, and it, to me, the balcony not only enhances the looks of it, I think it it just makes the the, the apartment more desirable. But uh, that was my original when it was two years ago that I put put in this application for COA, mm -hmm. and uh. As you well know, it wasn't approved, so I'm trying to, to uh, more or less see to doing the windows. And that, that's, that's, I like the windows too. That was not a major point. I just, I had done Cowboy Jack's building, and so I, I knew what to do to it, and it just made it easier. But that's, uh, that was before and after, when I bought the building, and then when I finished renovating it. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm just, uh, make it try to make it more usable. I, yeah. The highest and best use, as I said, for that building is apartments uh, at this time. When I was a kid, all the upstairs were doctors' offices and dentist offices and that thing that mm -hmm. to that nature. Uh, of course, they all went out on North Street or Loop now, so they're not any of them downtown. So now, apartments is the best use for that for those for that space, mm -hmm. and uh, that's. what I feel like needs to be done. Johnny, how much has the cost gone up in the two years you've been waiting on this? Tremendous amount. Uh, <laughs> it's gone up a, just to do the inside of the building about $150,000. And to do the outside of the building is gone up about 50000 And interest rate is more than doubled. So I don't, if I finance it for 10 years, I don't know how much more it's going to be, to be true mm -hmm. with you. Uh, I, in all truthfulness, I'd kind of like to wait to do it until the interest rate goes down. <laughs> <laughs>
but uh, I'd but like to ask another question about your says we have to, we have to look at what we're submitted. Sure. I'm I sure. gotta tell you, I'm liking what I'm hearing more than I'm looking at. I understand. But I can't make a decision on what I'm hearing as first as what we I have. I understand completely. So on A, like for example, your brick up there, part of my previous problem with A is that the brick wasn't the same. Um, this had, it was a transformation of the brick pattern. Are oh, you, no, I'm not gonna change the and brick. And so at all. now you're not. No, I've never, I never intended to change the brick. No. Never, never. That's just uh, uh, the, the, I guess the, my, it was kind of a rough rendering that I have mm -hmm. submitted. It was more yeah. or less of a, more or less just a guess is what it would be like. But no, I, I have no intention of changing anything on the brick. brick. Okay. And I've also, one recommendation that I like from the state was the fact that it, uh, they, they could take the paint off the brick. I mm -hmm. would much prefer to just be bl brick that's not painted. Mm -hmm. Much prefer. I've never had any luck doing that, but I, uh, I probably will attempt to take the paint off the brick. Mm -hmm. if, the, if that's not possible, then I'll have to paint it. But, mm -hmm. but I've never liked painted brick. But that's one thing that the, mm -hmm. that the state yeah. recommended that I, I think I like. I didn't particularly mm -hmm. like the, the look of their building. It looked like a 1970s building to me. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but uh, I will make an attempt to get the paint off the brick. But no, I'm not going to change any of the brick. Looking at the uh, pictures and the picture of Cowboy Jacks, their support poles out on the sidewalk. Yes, ma'am. Will you be having support poles out on the sidewalk? Probably. Probably. Okay. Uh, I'm more or less, when I did the Cowboy Jack building, which, by the way, uh, Cowboy Jacks is sold out and there's going to be a uh, Tex Mex restaurant there, kind of a family restaurant. They're cleaning it up and going to open first next month. So, I still call it the Cowboy Jack building, <laughs> right. but they're no longer there. That's a, but uh, I more or less copied uh, the Charles, at the time it was Charles Wright building, where the mm -hmm. antique shop is mm -hmm. behind here. And uh, they had the same poles and everything. There was a little bit of objection, and I could change that and put wooden mm -hmm. posts or whatever. There was a little bit of objection from, the, from this board when I did this because they didn't like the iron poles, but I building and they, they all but one everybody approved of it there was one objection to it mm -hmm. but I don't know any other way to support it safely without putting some legs under it mm -hmm. uh, so braces would not be sufficient I don't know these old buildings the brick is not that great I mean I could I could get some engineering studies on that or something but uh, it's I'd be afraid to have a whole lot of people out on it if it didn't have some legs under it. I don't think you can either. I don't think you can either. Uh, I feel like that's the best way to do it is put legs under it. Mm -hmm. And then to go back to something else that you stated, so um, driving by and now you have the picture, um, you're stating that there is nothing behind the plywood now. That is correct. All right. But, of course, that doesn't mean that we don't say that it needs to go to one of your design mm -hmm. that you have here. So are you comfortable with lower lower half of B that we were submitted in our packet, which is a single door, plate glass window, and a double door? Yes, that's, that's that. like I say, that's, that's a rendering that, that Brian Bray sent to me thinking that would be the giving me a choice on those and I think that's the, of the two choices that's the best this building is not as wide as Cowboy Jacks by three feet mm -hmm. so if I put the door in the middle of the building then the windows on each side are going to be small mm -hmm. so it's, it's a better look for, to have the windows the door to one side and have one larger window in the middle mm -hmm. that's the reason it's designed different I do have the, the iron, wrought iron posts that's in, that I put in Cowboy Jacks, and I have a set of doors bought that, uh, that go in there. But the, yes, the lower part of B, and basically the upper part, the upper part too, except there'll be a door in the middle and a, a balcony on it, is my proposal, hmm. with a cover over the balcony.
Thank you very much. Thank you. So I wanted to offer one point of clarification before y'all go to a vote or consideration or anything like that. Um, Dr. Beisler brought up HLPC traditionally votes on what was presented, not what was said in the meeting. Um, so there are a few different options here. Um, if HLPC is comfortable with the bottom design of B on here, HLPC as a board can approve the bottom half of the building to be done um, with the request that the applicant come back with more specific drawings about the upstairs. Um, you have the choice to table this request um, and ask that the applica applicant just bring back additional drawings for consideration um, if you want to see the very specifics of what Mr. Sloan is referencing. Um, or, of course, you have the um, option to deny the request and ask that they resubmit an entirely new packet. Um, so if, if any of those three are up to HLPC. We have seen um, a lot of these projects approved in pieces where it'd be approving the bottom floor design um, and giving kind of a, a thumbs up to like, we like what you said about the upper story, we just need to see a drawing of it um, and the applicant could bring that back to you at the next meeting. So we have seen that done in the past. We've also seen it tabled until we get more specific drawings. So um, just some guidance on that part of it. Exactly what I was going to ask. <laughs> I had a feeling that's where <laughs> what the question was going to be is how yes. do we proceed? So um, those are your op options. I'm happy to answer any questions or any more clarifications. Does anybody have any other questions of staff? We can still get it back. Um. Yeah, I, I have one. Yeah. Is it is it standard procedure to uh, ask the Texas Historical Commission Main Street uh, program for drawings? Um, we do every once in a while. Um, the great thing about being a Main Street city is that THC will do um, these architecture drawings and research for us for free. Um, so we have reached out to them. This is probably the fourth time we've done it. Um, and that was done um, after Mr. Sloan was denied by HLPC in 2020, 2021. I'd have to go back and look at my sheet. Um, after um, that was denied by HLPC, we reached out to Texas Historic Commission asking for some guidance giving us some options, and then supplied that to Mr. Sloan. Um, so it doesn't happen all the time, but if the applicant is having a hard time coming up with something that's historically appropriate or they just don't know where to start with their building, it's a free service we can offer okay. to people downtown. Well, uh, did he ask for it, or no. did the city ask for it? Nobody asked for it. It's just something that um, I asked for it on behalf of Main Street, um, okay. just because there is some confusion about what was and wasn't appropriate, and we just wanted to offer Mr. Sloan some options. My question is... Uh, we are a regulatory board. Yes. And I don't know if Main Street really, the Texas Main Street program, wants to be involved in these regulatory decisions. Is that, um, that's my question. So they're not involved in the regulatory decisions. They offer that as a resource um, to people in the downtown historic districts or in their Main Street districts. Um, so it's an option you can look at to help base your decision because a lot of that information in there is how to clean bricks and you know the sure. best way to do the preservation. So it's drawings you can look at for reference. If you say, look at it and say, I think all this information is correct, is backed up in historic fact and preservation, or it's something y'all can decide not to look at or reference at all. Um, it's My, just an additional sure. option. Same thing when, um, when the historic sites department does research and finds additional historic photos, um, looks for, through the overlay request or the history of any of the work done to that building. So it's just an extra step of research. Okay. I, I just, I, I'm not for sure that uh, periodically asking, does, you know, if he didn't ask for it, it, it's a big deal to call in the state of Texas on on someone that's applying for something. And even um, THC, um, through those design requests, there is nothing enforceable about that. That's so even if you call in and ask them for that design report, I know we it, then can't force them to the do it. The reason I mentioned it says mm -hmm. not for regulatory approval. And Correct. that's, it struck me that that's important to note. Mm -hmm. Yes, those designs cannot be enforced. They are just extra information for y'all to look at if you so choose, but you do not have to reference it. Well, let me ask this, following mm -hmm. up on Mr. App's question. Mm -hmm. Who puts together the proposal that comes before us, the applicant? Does the applicant have to sign off on what is proposed to us? So uh, the applicant has to sign off on the COA form um, and any information that they put forward, um, but staff routinely adds additional pictures, um, pulls from any of the historic resource surveys, um, and the applicant does not sign off on those things. Um, we add those in there as some background information um, because we don't expect HLPC members to know every bit of information about every single building in y'all's purview because 
I just sent out HRG letters. There was 347 properties that get these letters that are overseen by y'all. So we just add that additional information so you have some background on architectural styles, history of the building, and any work that's been done. But the applicant does sign off on anything that was submitted with the COA application. So, so we can assume <laughs> that the applicant saw these and this is what is being submitted. Yeah. The, the THC report, yes, Mr. Sloan was given a copy of it when THC did the report. Um, he was informed that we were doing it, and he also said, because also staff can request that report, but THC will not do it unless the owner signs off giving approval. So Mr. Sloan did sign it when we originally did it. Um, and so he has a copy of it and has seen it as well. But he himself didn't request it in the first place? No. Or so I initiated um, no. the application, but then the owner has to sign off on it before THC will do any of the research. Well, I'm more concerned on what came before us. Who put drawings A and B in here? Mr. Sloan submitted okay. those to city staff. So if he's using them, it doesn't matter who's approved. <laughs> <through. laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. I'm just getting at who, who put together what we have to look at. Yes. Uh, drawing A is the same drawing that was submitted when Cowboy Jacks was approved by HLPC years ago, and it was also put in the packet originally when Mr. Sloan asked you this building. Mm -hmm. um, drawing B is one after uh, THC submitted their report. Mr. Sloan wasn't quite happy with those drawings, and so um, city staff, and I wasn't aware that Brian Bray initiated that, um, but worked with Sally Ann Swearingen, um, who's in town, to kind of blend the Cowboy Jacks, the THC designs, and then you know the design of the current building um, into um, several drawings, um, and apparently there were two of them, and so B is one of those that was was submitted. Okay. Now, I think the point being made is, is that that he had the opportunity to choose between two drawings from someone selected by the staff, not have the opportunity himself to bring his, his own drawings to, to, to us. Well, the applicants are always welcome to submit any drawings they want to. Um, those two drawings were given Mr. Sloan, and I wasn't a part of the conversation, but at the same time, we don't give drawings to people saying you have to choose between A and B. Um, or you have to choose between these six. It's here is six options you can choose from that we were essentially trying to help come up with some happy medium. Um, so it wasn't choose A or B. These are the only two you can submit. It was just those are two that was, were drawn up by Miss Swearingen. When I visited with him and asked him about that, he told me that he was not given the opportunity to have a drawing with a balcony on it, that that's the only two options he had. And so that's a little different than saying he had the option himself. Well, and again, and I wasn't a part of the conversations with Mr. Sloan and Mr. Bray, but I and believe I'm just the repeating what I asked myself. I oh. mean, where did these come from? Yeah, and my understanding was just here is two options that blended multiple styles together to try to find something acceptable for that building. Um, I don't think the intent was pick A or B. Those are the only two that will be approved because even from the staff side, staff can't decide what is approved and not. So it's kind of here are some options that fit these design guidelines, fit your secretary's tier standards, and are likely going to be approved by HLPC, but an applicant can always bring a drawing where it's nothing but plate glass windows in the front and bright purple. Anybody's welcome to bring any drawings. Um, so if that was, I wasn't a part of that conversation, but I hope there wasn't a misunderstanding. Yes. Just to make it real clear, mm -hmm. what I understood uh, Mr. Sloan saying, he wants the drawing B but with a balcony. Is that right? Okay, so we all know what's being asked for. A balcony on drawing B. And a door on top. Yes, and a door to replace the center casement window. Okay, good. I guess he had one question. Yes, please. It is a historic building. It is downtown, and it looks pretty bad right now. And is it our job, preservation? Yes, ma'am. Y'all's job is historic preservation based on all the information at hand, our design guidelines, and making those decisions as a, as a committee. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm just, mm -hmm. I'm just saying, can't we go for it? <laughs> that is up we to HLPC can. based on our <laughs> ordinances. That is not a, the, the, the go for it is not a decision for staff to make, but that is, that is up to y'all. <laughs> mm -hmm. right. Well, would somebody like to make a motion? We have three options. We can, you can make a motion based on what's presented. We can table, we can ask for more information, and we can do partial. Someone goes to the back, please. This is here. Um. Oh. 
or this isn't a public, is it? We don't have a public so forum. We don't option. have a public forum option. <coughs> Excuse me. The applicant can speak. I'd like to make a motion. Yes. I'd like to make a motion that based on city ordinance criteria B, C, D, F, G, and K, that we authorize the option uh, that he presented with a balcony uh, and uh, that, uh, that that's the motion. You need to clarify for me, A or B, so that it's in the record, which one? G. <coughs> A. B. A? B. This is exactly why. He's not asking for A. He wants B. He I said the one he's asking for is what I said. Oh, okay. okay that would be well, I, I know you. I said, and I'm <laughs> saying we have to have it make it really clear. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Can I, can I B ask? is the option with the door to the left. Okay, that's what I'm. That's my motion. And can a staff ask a clarifying question? Yeah. Um, so it, just to make sure we have ask all him. of it. Sorry, <laughs> Mr. Reverie. Um, just to make sure that we have um, everything written down properly in our minutes. So it'd be approving design B as requested by Mr. Sloan with the addition of a balcony and a canopy over the balcony. Um, do you want to include the stipulation of a door in place of the middle casement window? Yes. Okay. And the stipulation? Well, you, it's yours. <laughs> About the posts? We didn't discuss the posts. Nope. No posts, no support No, posts. I didn't say no posts. I just said no stipulation. Okay. You know, because posts basically are not going to be a decision for us. It's going to be a decision for an engineer. If he cannot put posts there, it'd be less money for him to not put them. My, my experience is, in construction is, it's going to be impossible to not put posts there. But uh, I'm not saying it would be impossible. That's just from my experience it is going to be on an older building like that. Uh, but, uh, but are we stipulating a style of posts? The only posts we've been presented are the A <coughs> posts. Yeah. And that's why we're stipulating any style of balcony? Exactly. Okay. Well, we have a motion. Can you repeat what the motion is? No. In yes. I believe Mr. Bradbury's motion, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, is to approve design B as presented by Mr. Sloan and is, act, is on your screen with the addition of a balcony and a canopy over the balcony um, and the middle casement window be a door instead of a window with the replacement of the casement windows on either side to match what was there before. And the door moved to the left on the lower side. Correct. Yes. Yes. B. B. Okay. And so that is this is the motion as long as I have it correct. And I just want to clarify, we the longer this runs for him, the more the cost is, because I've dealt with that recently myself with the old university building. And we uh, we don't need to drag this out this young. We either do it or not do it because the price is already more than doubled. Uh, and that's my reason for doing that. I do have one question. If it's still a post that's holding it up, could that be wrapped in wood just to look more period? That is something that's commonly done. I don't know if it's been done downtown, um, but there are a lot of places that do a metal centered post with wood around it. If you go past um, the Durst Taylor Museum, for example, our fence looks like a wood fence, but it's actually a metal fence with a wood encasement. So that is yes. that is possible and that is done. I'm willing to stipulate that, that if we have to put post in, that he bring those back and they, the style of those be approved by this board. That's a good thing to add. That maybe in the style yes, of that's, in, yes. in the style of balcony as well, maybe? Did you add that to it or did, do we care about the style of balcony? Because if you add that to it, I'm going to vote for it. We have a stipulation that he come back with drawings. Uh, he, can, he can go with, through bit A. But when it's time to add or he gets drawings or circle drawings for the balcony, he comes back to us for that. So if the let, balcony is an issue. Yes, so let me make sure I'm understanding your question. So can HLPC request the applicant come back and bring the style or drawings of balcony? Mm -hmm. You can request that if you do not approve the balcony mm -hmm. in this motion. Okay. So if you approve the balcony in the motion, based on B and just saying putting a balcony, then the applicant does not have to come back to HLPC to look at the style. If you approve the bottom floor, you know, of the B design, um, and then ask the applicant come back for the, um, the balcony, then yes, you can review the style. Um, so those are kind of your options on that one. So do we have a second for the motion as stated, or it can die and 
have a new motion. This is your chance if you want to second it as stated. No. I would second it I, right now, but I'm not, but the stipulation about all the stuff around the post and things like that, I thought it was just a motion to do B with a balcony with no stipulations. Is that the motion That's before the, us? You're, you're absolutely yes. correct. The motion okay. is That's B the motion before with us. the balcony. I said that I was with, the only motion that could be modified is mine, I believe, by Robert Central. But, the, but I said I was willing to stipulate that, that the type of material used to wrap those or whatever and come back and we approve those. Well, I'm, I'm trying to move us forward. But that's two so, motions. So yeah. I'd like, the way I understand it, Perky, is that's two motions. We haven't. Right. Well, I, I, so if we he is making motion two. number one, number his first motion, that we let him do B, just like it's drawn, with a balcony, and where there, that first motion was with no stipulations, Correct. I would like to make second that motion. Okay. All right. So we now have a motion and a second. Um, discussion. I, I feel that I don't see a balcony option, so I want to know what I'm voting on. But that's my yeah, concern. Frankly, I feel like it's very so. vague, and it's just like free for all. I'd rather so. see a drawing, and preferably the structure before the before we say yes on the style of the balcony. We're giving them free reign with the balcony. Right. Mm -hmm. So I. I yep. I'm all for the building being yeah. done, 100%. Oh. Perfect. <laughs> I just want to see more about the balcony. All right. And can, we, can we assume since he provided this? So if – so how, how about I clear out this? Oh. Okay. <laughs> can we have a vote on the motion well, let's that we have? discussion if there is some. You've got to let it be some discussion. Yeah, sorry, so, so that's why I'd ask about this. So we can assume – since you've done that. Well, so can't we can't assume so anything. In, <laughs> let, me, let me clear. So in the, the motion was to approve B with the balcony. Um, and so you can always request that Mr. Sloan do the exact um, balcony that's on Cowboy Jacks. But if it's not part of the motion saying following this style, then if you approve just a blanket, we approve a balcony, then he can do whichever style he so chooses. He can also begin to get to work if you do that, and then we can request that he come back. I said I was willing to amend the motion that he come back to, uh, but no, that's okay. I just so, want to clarify. Yeah, that. and as far as coming okay. back, we I think holding this gentleman up who has committed a, a lot of his life and money to downtown Nacogdoches, <coughs> we've held him up long enough, and we need to do something to either say forget this, or, or. Let's move forward with it. Well, it's then I'll ask again if there's no discussion, we have a vote on the current motion. That's right. So, all, all in favor of the motion as stated, say aye. 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 All in, not in favor of the motion as stated, say nay. 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 You better count them. I don't know who said what. Where, yeah. Nay. nay. So it's nays. So it's four, four, four to, to three. three. Okay. Uh, and of course, there is an. Excuse me. Um, so there, of course, HLPC has the option to approve the bottom half of B and request that Mr. Sloan come back with more balcony um, drawing specification styles at the next meeting. We can do that as well. Um, or of course, you can let the motion stand as it is. Or of course, that motion stands as is. But HLPC is welcome to make. So it's other motion. Yes, there we go. Yes, yes, can please. I make a motion yes. that we accept drawing B Thank you. as drawn and that he come back once he has his drawings for the balcony for us to approve the balcony? Are you, are, are you, because um, B doesn't have the, the door. Well, okay, let me, I've got rid of my drawings. What do you do? <laughs> He's going to put, oh, we're not putting my drawings, bear with me. Because B doesn't have a door. No, I know. I'm, I'm He's for my, I got it written down in just a second. Oh, where's my paper? There, okay, so he's going to have two went on the upper balcony, well, where the balcony is, two windows to the left, two windows to the right, door in the center. Below, there's a door to the left, a, 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 a large window, and then two doors to the right. Am I correct with that? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. So that's, 
fixed. That's what he planned to do. Mm-hmm. And uh, he said he was going to remove the paint. He tried. He tried. He tried to remove the paint. <laughs> and um, yeah, we can give approval to that right yeah, now, too. Right now, for sure. So, so let me make sure I have your motion correct. Um, so would be approved drawing B with two casement windows on one side, two on the other, door in the middle, mm-hmm. um, an offset single door, an offset double door, large one in the middle, um, with the approval of removing paint from the brick if possible, and the request that the applicant come back with the detail for the, bal- the second story balcony for HLPC review. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Awesome. Is there a Could I second? ask a question? Mm-hmm. And we're approving a balcony, and this motion has got to be approved by us. Mm-hmm. Great. This Yes, and, and with the balcony, you, but that you want to see the style before it's done. I second the motion. All right. All right. Any other now discussion on this? Yes, I do have that on there um, with the balcony, but before final approval, we'll need to have yeah. style review by HLPC. Okay. Any other? And we have concern? a second on part because that would include any wrapping because the post would be the balcony. Okay. okay. That address everybody's yeah. concern? Yes. All right. So could we have a vote on the this motion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. All right. No. Good. Thank you. And thank you for keeping us straight on what we're doing. Next. There's a lot of papers. Yes, sorry, let me shuffle my things around as well. Yeah. There we go. So next is a COA for 703 Virginia Avenue. Nope. Um, Yes, so this is a COA for 703 Virginia Avenue, um, case 2023-023. Um, the applicant is not here for this request. He's actually out of the country right now, um, but was very excited to see us on there. Um, this is 703 Virginia Avenue. Um, for those of you new to HLPC, this is actually a former demolition by neglect case. Um, mm-hmm. This building I was, was in this. horrible condition. We've been working with the owner for almost a little over a year now, um, working with them on this building. Um, it has multiple issues as far as um, rotten siding. Sorry, I'll pause. Yeah, yeah let me pause. Thank Sorry. You. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that. I'm used to talking at a rec center all day, so I can talk over anything uh, yeah, at this point right. and tune it out. But be easier to hear you. Okay. Better for the recording. Sorry. Okay. All right. Um, so 703 Virginia Avenue was a former demolition by neglect case. It had multiple issues as far as rotten siding, porches falling off. Um, so many issues. Um, so we worked on that for years. Um, this is a new owner um, that just recently purchased the house, actually filled out the COA before he'd even finalized the purchase, and I made him wait because That's I need awesome. to know that he's the owner before he does anything to the building. Um, so what he's requesting is, I don't know if I ever, there we go, um, is to demolish the um, front porch, which is extremely deteriorated, falling apart, and it's kind of a safety issue that our code enforcement has brought to his attention. Um, so demolish the existing front porch, um, demolish the existing rear porch, but then to rebuild the front porch to match what is currently there. Mm -hmm. Um, He's in the process of photographing everything before he went out of the country, uh, photographing the front porch, um, doing the measurements, and then using as much original material as possible. Um, So what he is requesting today from y'all is to demolish and rebuild the front porch, but then the rear porch he's requesting just to demolish at this time. Um, From what we can Mm -hmm. tell, and I've been on the property a few times, um, it's a little scary back there, Um, it looks like it was a um, large open porch, which over time was was enclosed with roofing material, fiberglass, kind of whatever was laying around, Um, and so he doesn't exactly know what the original porch looked like, Um, so his request is just to demolish the unsafe portion of the structure and then come back to HLPC with a firm design of the back porch. Mm -hmm. Um, So we have, and staff finds that B, C, D, E, F, and G relate to this one. Um, so here's some pictures. This is the front porch. Um, you can see there's actually political signs covering up holes in the front. Um, this is a little better picture I got the other day. Um, one of the posts at the bottom is completely rotten and starting to fail, which is why you see the lean there. Um, so this is the porch he's requesting to photograph, measure, preserve as much material as he can, and then rebuild exactly to match. 
Um, this is the back porch. Um, these are pictures the applicant <laughs> supplied because I did not go back there on my own the other day to take pictures. Um, it looks like there was a longer open back porch, but then it just got enclosed with extra windows. There are multiple windows that don't match. Um, there's tarps covering some of it, and it's just in, in disarray at this point. Um, the applicant also has several other items in the COA that were all administratively approved because of regular maintenance as far as um, replacing a few window panes, um, replacing rotten siding to exactly match. He's actually created his own plane to get wood siding that exactly matches what is on that building. Um, so he's really doing the work, which is great. Um, and then a few patches in the roof and things like that. This will be a much more extensive project, but this was just more what he was concerned about right away was kind of the, the areas that people do walk on because people walk around there and they think it's still an abandoned home. Um, he was very concerned that someone is going to step on the front porch or back porch and have it cave in on them. Well, I don't know how he'd get in to do work if safely in one or I think the other. he's been going in the carport entrance, which seems to be a little bit more stable because from what we can tell, the carport's probably from like the <laughs> 70s or 80s. Um, and also, um, one thing I realized after I sent out your packet, um, I actually forgot to include the history of this building. Yes. Um, so quickly, um, according to our historic <laughs> site survey, it was built right around 1904. It is contributing to the Virginia Avenue District. Um, they do reference the one-story porch with the columns, um, but there is no reference to the back porch, um, which leads me to believe either the surveyors couldn't get around to the back area to see the porch, um, or it was not there at all. Um, so we're really not 100% sure on that portion of it. Um, and fun little fact about it, actually the Baxters owned this um, house for a long time. Um, they owned the Baxter Hotel here in town, and then Baxter Duncan um, was related to them, um, who was one of our casualties in World War I. Um, and so I realized that I forgot to put that in y'all's packet, so I apologize for that. And I'm, and like I mentioned, um, the applicant is not here, but is out of the country, um, but I'm happy to answer any questions that I can. So questions for staff on this COA application. I'm just really, really glad it got bought into that. I'm so glad. Okay. No questions? Well, hearing... No questions. I'd like to make a motion that we approve COA 2023-023, um, that it meets uh, criteria B, C, D, E, F, and G, and um, I will second approve that. it. I will second that. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd like to say I'm, this is one of those cases, demolition by neglect has pushed it forward, and now we're saving it, and it's going to be a fabulous wow. place. That's, great. That's why mm -hmm. we have that program. Any other comments on this property? I'm sure the neighbors are going to be happy too. I think they will be. Mm -hmm. All right. A few of them have already called me asking who bought the property and of course I have to tell them I can't give out names and stuff like that but seems to be very excited about doing it. Good. All right. Any last chance questions, comments? All right. In that case, all in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Anybody opposed to the motion? Say nay. Okay. All right. um, See, so these are just a little bit of housekeeping. Um, for our new HLCC members, usually we have any peeping at the end in case anybody wants to leave and doesn't want to hang out here the whole time. Um, so our next item is review and discuss 2023 historic restoration grant cycle and scoring criteria. Um, this is more informational, but I'm happy to answer any questions y'all have. Um, so our historic restoration grant cycle starts every October, um, or every September, and then we get applications in October. Um, the letters actually went out today. Um, we send out letters to all of our um, owners in historic districts or have individually designated properties. Like I mentioned, it's 347 letters. 347. Um, there's a few that the city owns that we don't send letters to ourselves because we can't get our own funding extra. Um, so those letters went out today. Um, they had officially opened September 15th, but we wanted some people to have those letters in hand so they knew about it early. Um, applications are due on Friday, October, 20, October 13th. Um, 2023 by 4 p.m. Um, those can be turned in either online. Um, we do have an online form. They can bring them to the rec center, um, and we can do that easily. Um, as a reminder, this is a reimbursement grant program, um, so people apply for this grant. Um, we score them all as a group. Um, everybody who applies, as long as they meet the criteria and the project is approved by HLPC, they will get some sort of funding. Um, usually funding ranges from $5,000 to we've seen $30,000 in the past. Um, $30,000 is pretty rare, but we have seen it. Um, but this is a reimbursement grant. Um, the applicant is required to submit a full application, um, a historical narrative, um, any information about the projects they're wanting to do. And um, I put in here qualified cost estimates. 
Um, we do that because occasionally people will come in and say, I think it's going to cost $10,000. Um, we can't do that unless we have a contractor of some sort say, it's going to cost $10,000 to paint this building. Mm -hmm. The applicant does not have to go with that price, that contractor. We just need someone that's qualified to make that so they're not just saying it's going to cost $50,000 and I'll find all sorts of receipts. <laughs> um, so they're required to turn that in as well. Um, HLPC will review all of these funding requests as a whole um, on November 6th. Um, once y'all make your recommendations, um, then it will go to City Council. It's a very quick, quick turnaround. They will review it November 7th. Um, and at that time, once City Council approves um, our funding for the year, then the applicants can start on their projects. Um, to date, HLPC has awarded a little over $1.1 million in projects. Um, out of that, we've spent about $764,000. Um, so we haven't awarded, given out the full $1.1 million because people don't complete their projects or they come in way under budget um, or they just keep rolling them over and we have a few still in the books. Um, but that has supported over $4.5 million in historic restoration in town. Um, so something y'all should be very proud of. I know I am. Um, and so we hope, um, generally we have about 10 to 12 applications each year. Um, we've had 25 in the past. Um, it's always great. You know, we want a ton of applications, but that also comes with the other edge of the sword that if there's 25 applications, you get a little bit less money. You know, if there's 10 applications, mm -hmm. usually we have quite a bit to split. Um, each year we have $25,000 of hotel motel occupancy tax funds that get put into our pot and any funds that were not expended from years past that roll over. Um, and so we have that that will be available. Um, I also put in your packet your scoring criteria, which looks like this. Mm -hmm. um, I know there's a few questions about it when I did some of our new member orientation, so I just wanted y'all to have eyes on that. Mm -hmm. um, applicants get additional points if they are in a National Register district and listed as contributing, um, if they are a National Historic uh, Register site, an RTHL. Um, there's also um, additional, or additional points are awarded if it's a public building. Um, because, of course, that's a, a big public good. You know, if it's a, a museum, not a city museum since we're not eligible, but if it's an old university building, for example, would get additional points because it's a public building that everybody gets to use. Um, also, the use of the structure, if the structure is currently vacant and this work is going to make it to where you can occupy that building, you get five points in your application because we want these empty buildings filled. Um, and also, the older your structure is, the more points you get. Um, the only time that you would lose any points in this funding <coughs> is if, you have applied for a historic restoration grant in the past and defaulted, which means you just didn't complete it and kind of said forget it. Um, we take away one point for that, so it's not a huge detriment, but we're trying to deter people from applying over and over and never doing the projects because then it's holding up money that could go towards other projects that get done. And also, if they don't submit their project narrative or history of the structure, they do get points deducted because then that means staff has to go and find all that information and pull it together for them, or we would have to submit it to y'all with an incomplete application, which is not what we want to do. Um, and it is, makes it a little harder to score the rest of it if we have to go find the history and then do the scoring. Um, and so that is um, what we will grade on the staff end. We then present to HLPC, it, it's an Excel sheet where it says 101 East Main, applied for this much. Based on these scores, we recommend 10% reimbursement not to exceed a certain dollar amount. Um, so y'all will see that at your November 6th meeting. Um, HLPC members can always help by telling people about this grant program. If you know people that live in the historic district, you mm -hmm. can't apply for them, um, but you can tell them about it. You can bring them an application, walk them through the process. We try to make it pretty seamless. Um, they have to fill out a one-page HRG application with the COA as well and put in an estimate and bring it to our office, and we ask them for a few photographs and a little, and when I say historic narrative, it can be like six sentences on the history of the building because um, we have a lot of that information. Um, so if y'all want to tell people about it, we will be putting posts on social media, press release, and things like that that will go out early next week. Okay, so due is October 13th. Yeah. Okay. Oh, pardon. Is there any money left over from last time? Yes, I don't have the exact dollar amount just because um, just we have yeah, yeah. yeah we have about five HRGs that are due um, the same day that from our last cycle that have to be turned in the same day as these. Um, and so at that point, we'll figure out um, if okay. HLPC is going to do some more reimbursements. And of course, we did an, one earlier today. I was um, going to say, we just gained a hundred, uh, 90 extra dollars. Yeah, we did. <laughs> exactly. We have 90 extra dollars, but we also have to expend that money out of there. Um, so we have $25,000 to start with, and we generally roll over um, fifteen dollars to $20,000 um, just from years past where maybe we didn't allocate everything because the math didn't work right and we had 600 bucks left over. Um, or every once in a while, we'll have several years where, you know, three of the projects out of 10 got done, and so we roll a lot of money over. Um, the good thing is for the HRGs this year, um, our applicants have been very diligent. We've got a lot of them awarded, um, but I think we still have four or five outstanding. Um, so we will probably have 
35 to 45 thousand dollars to give away this year um, and I'll supply that that'll be in y'all's funding sheet as well that says here's what we started with and here's how we allocated it mm -hmm. any other questions on that one yeah. I, I think this is the best thing that we do it's, it's wonderful I'm always very proud of it and people are always very appreciative mm -hmm. um, we make their houses prettier and they get onto our homes so, <laughs> so, so I think it helps everybody A different, a different, a different one. This is Remember that when Ben lived on Virginia? Yeah, that yeah, house? that's, you're thinking of a different one. Hopefully oh, that will come before well, us. I'm glad Virginia got the yes. painted. I think this is the movie, Make It a Couple. They're making the movie. Oh, they from, are? From L.A. That's oh, a couple that has that out. <laughs> well, I'm glad that the house that we're going into mm -hmm. was letting deteriorate on what is fitting to be our tour. Yeah. Um, I have I have one thing just so I can uh, it can be fixed just because it it reads and I want you to be able to brag uh, we've got a, a period before the 503 and the 1.127 million dollars oh, no. and so it reads when you read it it looks like we've given out eleven hundred dollars <laughs> that's my and mistake I will fix that one. we definitely want nobody to think it's not less than a million um, dollars because I was reading it that way, and I'm like, I don't know. I got 764 million out of 1,100. Sorry, that's so. 1.1 million dollars awarded, yeah. 764,585 dollars and 68 cents actually given out. School to teacher. I know. She used to grade my grad school papers. I don't remember. <laughs> she is not. She knows not to be. A I, it's fine. Yes. So yes, I will correct that in the packet as well, and we will be putting that out as well because. Great. HLPC does great things with these hotel occupancy tax funds, so we want to brag on y'all for giving away all this money and supporting historic restoration. So that will be going out as well in addition to these grants are open and look at all the great things we did with it. We also have um, some previous applicants that have said I can use their before and afters um, that aren't too shy about, you know, some of the befores look a little rough. Um, but they were like, that's fine. The afters look great, so please share them. So we will be doing that as well. Um, and we'll do that this during September and October, and then we'll, we'll do it again um, in May for Historic Preservation Month as well. Questions for her about that? We've only got one more thing on the list. There's <laughs> left. This is all the good stuff. But. I know, these are the fun things. All right. Um, so your last item is to appoint a chair and vice chair. Um, our former chairman, um, Carol Eaton Walsh, rotated off the board. Um, I don't know if we ever had an actual vice chairman. Um, did, but it, it's, I think they rotated off too. Probably did. Oh. Um, so in our NACA Boards and Commission Handbook, um, the only stipulation we have is that a chair and vice chair shall be selected annually by a majority of committee members. Hmm. So what we've done in the past is we hand out a little piece of paper. You write down either yourself or who you want to be chair, and then uh, CC and myself will count it up. Whoever has the most votes is chair, second is vice chair. Um, so as long as HLPC is good with that, that is the method that has seemed to work the best in the past. Um, and of course, if you have zero desire to be chair, you can also state that as well so your fellow members do not vote for you. So, and I will grab our little piece of paper. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. Do we just need one or more than one? You just one you just write like one and two. So I don't I don't know the names okay. y'all's names are new members. I kinda of know who you guys are. Oh yeah, but but can we this is my first meeting back yes. and kind of laid up for a while. Yeah, sorry. We can go around and introduce ourselves just so everybody knows. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah, go ahead. I'm Ann Keenan. I've been sick for a few months, and I'm finally up, out, and about. Good. Yep. Little by little, so I'm glad to be back. And uh, I live downtown. I got one of those grants one time. Not for very much. I just got my house painted. But it was nice. And it just occurred to me, I didn't apply when I got my roof put on, but I could have. You could have, yes. I could have. So thank you. Anyway. Um, so, and I don't particularly want to be chair, but if y'all need me, I will, of course. Okay. Ian? Yeah. We have Judy, who's hard at work. Judy. B, Judy Kugel. Mm -hmm. Jeff Apt. Perky Beisel. Charles Bradbury. Vicki Winthrop. Okay, hi Charles, I'm Vicki. Jan Schalker. Jan. Yeah, and y'all just write down a name and remember whoever gets the most votes is our chairman, whoever gets the second most votes is our vice chairman. And so whenever you're done, I. Judy, do you need another piece of paper? No. Okay. <laughs>
too much inside time today. The dry air. I didn't think Maggie ever had to comply with this. Oh, I think I screwed mine up. If, if you see one completely screwed up, it's probably mine. <laughs> Uh, on Thursday last week, mm -hmm. Preservation, Texas. No, he wasn't there. There are a lot of amazing projects going on here in East Texas. So, and of course, we didn't put names on it. Y'all can look at the ballots afterwards if you don't trust me. Um, so, we have four votes for Perky, um, two votes for Jeff, and one vote for Joanne. So, that would make Perky our chairman and Jeff our vice chair. Um, and I just need a motion from one of y'all to approve um, the chair and vice chair as voted. I so move. I second it. All right. Good. I can be absent a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and just to clarify, the chair and vice chair have no special powers other than they have to be here to run the meetings. Um, so their vote doesn't count for anymore. It's just when the chairman is here, call well, the meeting I to don't order. Want to be chair. No, you guys have already voted and accepted it, Jeff. Sorry. Um, so yeah, no special powers. They just call the meeting to order. They adjourn it and kind of keep the meeting moving. If the chair is not here, the vice chair acts in their stead. And if we don't have one, we appoint one. Yes. <laughs> all right, and that's all I have for y'all. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, of course. Thank you.